go to Sarah in Grand Junction, Colorado. Sarah, what's going on? How are you? I'm really nervous. I get nervous in regular phone calls, so my heart is jumping out of my chest right now. <laughs> Lucky for you, this is not a regular phone call. This is just some knucklehead <laughs> on a podcast or on the YouTube, so it's good, easy for everybody. So what's up? Um, so the gist of my question is I'm, I wanted to get some objective advice, whether it's time to just move on or if I write that letter and uh, reach out to my family again. Okay. Walk um, me through it. So uh, details is uh, when I was three years old, my father killed my mother and my eldest sister. Wow. And so we went, yeah, so me and my siblings went to live with my aunt, uncle, and their children. How many, and, kids, uh, how many kids did know, they have? They had four. Hmm. Were you in the home when your mom was murdered? I, I was. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I have vague memories of that day, but, uh, you mm. know, I was three years old, so it was, you know, that it's just very vague. Um, but anyway, so um, there was always, like, a difference between us. Like, you know, the, their children called them mom and dad, but we called them by their first names, and mm. it's kind of just there was always kind of this hierarchy and class difference in of, the home. Of course, yeah. Man. And, uh, yeah, and so... <clears throat> I was the youngest by six years, so I everybody had moved out, and I was alone with them for quite some time. Mm. And so I'm going through, you know, the teenager phase, and uh, I can't even remember what happened, but uh, um, said something that my cousin didn't like, and they, they he told me that I was going to end up in prison just like my father. And uh, obviously that made me extremely upset to be compared to, like, somebody that uh, murdered my, my mother and my sister. Yeah. And— uh, I, uh, so my uncle pulled me aside and we went on a little hike to clear our head and he admitted to me that he loved me, but not like one of his own children. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just, uh, feel like I never really got past those words yeah. and I didn't know what to do at this point. Um, I, and how old are you now, sir? I'm 29, and so that was like um, uh, part of the problem is that it's, it's been so long, mm. and I thought I was long gone over this, you know, like I'd done the work, I'd gotten past it, started a new life, made new friends, made a new, you know, my my family with my friends, and I don't know why it's bothering me again. It makes me feel, I don't know, childish, and yeah. that brings me, I don't know, sh shameful feelings, and it just makes me feel stupid and weak that this is bothering me again so do you, do you have any idea as to what set this this what brought these memories back are you are my you dating somebody was released and uh my father was released from prison this last september mm -hmm. and i think that did i don't know <laughs> kind of bother me but i am getting uh married next month okay and it's just like, you know, he's got all his side of the family and I got, uh, you know, my siblings are going to be there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, my brother's going to have to walk me down the aisle. There's just, you know, there there's you differences. Go. Yeah. So you may have, quote unquote, gotten over this. Um, your body has not. Your body's been carrying this for a long time. And it's all stuff that three-year-olds should never, ever see. And it experienced things that three and four and five and six and 18 year olds should never, ever experience. No child ever should be told by a family member, you know, I like you, but I don't love you as much as them. Mm -hmm. You should have never heard those words. And I'm sorry that somebody said that to you. Yeah, it's, I think it just, it's made me feel like this feeling of like an unwanted puppy is just of like kind of like yeah. been in the back of my mind all my life. That's exactly right. How have you, over the last, you know, 20 years, how have you filled that, that hole? Uh, you know, I'm, I moved, kind of just ran, mm -hmm. made new friends, made new relationships and, you know, we definitely some, um, some alcohol and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but uh, I have a better grasp on that stuff now. Now it really is just, you know, 
every once in a blue moon, I don't have a problem. But there was definitely moments um, and years where where I did. Yeah. So here's the hard truth, and then I'll give you some light at the end of the tunnel, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. Your dad murdering your mom will never make sense. There will never be a moment when you go, oh, okay. Not being welcomed by your aunt and your uncle will never make sense. Nothing anybody can say unless your uncle was to call you and and tell you, I was so wrong and I'm sorry. You were a beautiful baby. I'm so glad I got to be your dad. Um... Like, that will never make sense. You'll never go, mm-hmm. oh, okay. You can wrap your head around it, that your uncle was ashamed and heartbroken and went from his own four kids or three kids to suddenly his seven kids. It doesn't matter. You were six, right? And so mm-hmm. the heartbreaking part of all this is healing will not come from answers and clarity. You have that. You have all the answers. Your dad did an unspeakable evil act. Your uncle committed an unspeakable evil act. Right? Yeah, and it just, uh, you know, it's like... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. present. Hold on. Oh, sorry. You are so good at... Man... You are good at, whoa, here it comes, and you can take a hard right turn and get out of a painful situation quick, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to just sit in this for a second. Healing won't come from answers and clarity. It will only come from moving forward. Mm -hmm. And so if you think of your life as as a story, that... There's, you've got some ugly, hard sentences in your story. Dad killed mom, period. Uncle told me I was less than, period. Cousins made fun of me, period. I let some guy take, um, f- try to fill a gap. I let alcohol fill a gap. I made bad decisions, whatever, period. And what we all want to do, and you've got, you've got trauma I can never imagine, that 99.9% of the listeners of this could never wrap their head around. But what we all do with trauma is we have that pin in our hand, and what we want to do is go back and try to edit those sentences over and over and over, and you can't. they got periods at the end of them. What you can do, the only thing you can do, is write something different. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. At some point, you got to let that you got to write that three-year-old girl a letter and let her know she never should have seen that. And it was wrong. And you got to let that little six-year-old girl know that she's beautiful and fun and got dealt a really crappy set of cards. And then she got some help from somebody and they didn't play well. Mm-hmm. And then, man, as you step into these new life adventures, this will happen as you get married it happens dad's coming out of jail your body sounds the alarms again and what healing's going to look like for you is recognizing oh that's what that is my body's trying to keep me safe again mm-hmm. my body's trying to keep me safe because there's a murderer on the loose now my body's trying mm-hmm. to keep me safe from people who've hurt me in the past you know what hurts me the worst family the one thing that keeps us well has been a nuclear bomb in your heart and mind and so you're in, you're leaning back into the one thing that was so, was torture to you. And your brain and heart are trying to say, hey, we remember this script and it didn't go well. Yeah. And that's when you have to remind your body and your heart and your mind, I hold the pen and I get to write what comes next. Tell me about this person mm-hmm. you're marrying. He's great. Uh we we are very much on the same level. Awesome. We we have a lot of silly fun together, and it is a, uh, it's been very fun. Is he hold on? Is he and safe? He is. You trust him? I do. And do you recognize you're entering into a covenant that the first woman that you ever knew that covenant right ended up tragic? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So every time those alarms go off for you, just drop your shoulders and say, thank you for trying to keep me safe. I've got it from here. Mm-hmm. Right? When you have a kid, your first beautiful little baby, those alarms are going to set off again. And that's when you know, I got it. I got it. Thank you. We're mm-hmm. safe because my brother's awesome and my other brother's awesome. And my sister, who I don't know how many brothers that you got, they're awesome. They've been there, ride or die. They're going to walk you down the aisle. Is that the way you drew it up? Nope. Is that the reality of the world you live in? Yep. So we're not going to try to edit the past. We're going to write the story of the future. And I do think at some point you're going to have to write those kids a letter. And let Mm -hmm. them off the hook. Because they're still fighting for you hard, hard, hard. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what do you say? I, I Honestly, I don't even know if my uncle realized what he said hurt me, you know, or if he was just, uh, that was just the way that his brain worked. So I, I just, I never knew if I should share with him what that actually did to me or if I should just let it, let it go. I think you should put that brick down. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what letting him know would accomplish. Me either. I don't know what he's going to be able uh, to tell you mm -hmm. that will make you go, okay, good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so as a part of your healing, if you want to talk to him and you have that type of relationship with him now, go for it. A punitive grenade throw won't help you. It just causes more bodies, right? Yeah. And forgiveness is often one-sided. Your decision to say, I forgive you. Was was your uncle your dad's brother or your mom's brother? My dad's. Okay. So your dad was, your uncle was dealing with so much garbage, did not have the tools, did not expect to have what happened. And then, man, just let you down. And at the same yeah, time, we were... hey, let's be fair, at the same time gave mm-hmm. you a roof and a house and food, right? I mean, did the things yeah. to keep you where you needed to be, Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, as I heard once, I love you. Got to blame fairly, right? He yeah. got you from point A to point B. Man, a lot of scars along the way. And I can only imagine he was dealing with his own trauma. All that to say is, your story moving forward is not about him. And as I'm sitting here trying to unravel it for you, it does. It's it's of no value. Mm-hmm. Right now. If you need him to say the words, I love you, go ask him. But be ready if he says no, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think it it's worth it at this point. I just, uh, I wasn't sure if I was taking the easy route or not. I couldn't tell if I just wanted to let it go and uh, Sarah, I there, was just there is copping no, out. There is no easy road here. Mm-hmm. There's not. Every road is a hard road in this situation. And who's judging? If you find an easy road, take it. Right? Mm-hmm. There's, there is no... You've been through enough. You've been through enough. And so what I want you to do as best you can is begin to look forward, not backwards. And that's hard because what you experienced was evil and hard and, and just disaster. Mm-hmm. But you got some other knucklehead boy ahead of you saying, hey, you're the one I want to hitch my wagon to, and I love you. And he trusts you enough to be silly with you. Mm-hmm. And he said, you're, 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 my, you're my gal. And you said, all right, I'm in. <laughs> right? Yep. Well. And the way you can make meaning moving forward is that you weren't welcomed. Everyone in Sarah's life is going to know that they're welcome. Nobody mm-hmm. will out hospitality, Sarah. And when your little kids are born, no kid on earth will have ever understood love like your kids are going to understand it. Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. That was very therapeutic, John. I was nervous, but uh, thank you so much for your help. Well, thank you for calling and trusting me with this story. And I want you to know your story is going to benefit and um, be a gift to Anyone listening to this, and again, very few of us are going to experience what you experienced, but we all are wrestling with 
How do we go back and deal with old trauma? And then how do we move forward? And it's almost always both in. Right? It's almost always both in. I'm sorry that you went through that. But you have shown resolve and strength and bravery and compassion for yourself, for this new person. Man, you're a really special person, and I'm glad that the world gets to hear your story. And more importantly, when you begin to find value in you and say, you know what, three-year-old, you should never have seen that. I'm sorry. You know what, six-year-old, seven-year-old, I'm sorry. You know what, Dad, I'm not carrying your trauma anymore. That was on you. Hey, uncle, aunt, there wasn't something wrong with me. There was something wrong with y'all. And y'all are experiencing your own drama, so thank you for the bed. Thank you for the food. And I'm going to go make my new life now. Hey, and brother, thank you for stepping in. Thank you for being the dad I didn't have. Thank you for being willing to walk me down the aisle. It's not the picture I drew up, but it's the picture I got. And now I'm going to go make meaning of this. And you're playing a long, long game, Sarah. A lot of us who experience trauma as kids are playing long games. Because we're going to heal for ourselves, but we're going to heal for ourselves so that our kids have an entirely different, different system. Those bricks in our backpack, we take them out and they pave a brick path. That's what legacy is, right? It paves a road that our kids can walk on, that we can walk on, that our neighbors can walk on, that kids in our community can walk on, that we're never going to meet. Because we did the hard work of getting those bricks out of our backpack and saying, I'm not carrying that crap anymore. You're brave and you're awesome, Sarah. Thank you so much for the call.